that I'm speaking at the rhetoric commencement? And her response was, well, I should hope so after you spent four years majoring in a glorified Toastmasters. <laughs> so for me, the problem with being a rhetoric major is that I have this incessant urge to make everything meta, including this speech. And as rhetoric majors, it's really tempting to just go meta every time someone asks what we study because we know exactly how that conversation is going to go. It's like I've stepped outside my body and I'm watching a train wreck in slow motion. <laughs> and I loved having this conversation with Germans because they really do pride themselves on their impeccable English. And every time that I said that I study rhetoric, I could see their hearts sink. And I'd have to assure them that no one in America knows what rhetoric is either. <laughs> For a while, I tried to describe rhetoric as English with an attitude. <laughs> and I think by that I meant that in the same way an English major might analyze, criticize, deconstruct, and reconstruct a book or a poem, Rhetoric does all these things, but we take a broader meaning of the word text. For us, everything not only has, but is an argument. Paintings, architecture, gender, even films. But I found out that rhetoric is not English when I wrote a paper for an English professor recently. <laughs> when I got it back, he had circled some of my more creative language and scribbled, this is not a word in the margins. <laughs> and the rhetoric professor would never do that. <laughs> because if you finish a rhetoric paper and you don't have a bunch of red squiggly lines all over your Word Microsoft Word document, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> rhetoric is also not philosophy. In fact, Plato invented the word rhetoric 2,000 years ago as the other to philosophy. So when people ask about the connection between the two disciplines, I describe my history of rhetoric class, which I fondly call Rhetoric versus Philosophy, the Smackdown. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the question about rhetoric that we all dread. Oh, so that's like pre-law, right? <laughs> to which I can only sigh and say, Yes, yes it is. <laughs> I mean, I understand why the what is rhetoric conversation is necessary. Rhetoric is one of the many things unique to Berkeley. And looking around, you can see that even at Berkeley, it's a small major. Fun fact, the rhetoric major is so small that we have to share our graduation with another department. <laughs> <laughs> but believe it or not, some people out there have actually heard of our little department. I met someone on an airplane and told her that I studied rhetoric at Berkeley, and her response was, direct quote, Oh my god, Judith Butler! <laughs> <laughs> to which I replied, I know, right? <laughs> and then we became Facebook friends. <laughs> We are all rhetoricians, whether we have a degree in rhetoric or not. We're all making an argument every time we speak or move or think. So in a world of rhetoricians, where do the rhetoric majors fit in? Well, maybe the what is rhetoric conversation is Berkeley's gift to us. Besides always having something to talk about at job interviews or the proverbial cocktail party, we, as rhetoric majors, have a unique opportunity. Not only are we ourselves doing something with our words, but what we're doing is pointing out that our words do, in fact, do things. <laughs> Every time we talk about rhetoric, we get to have a conversation about having conversations. <laughs> and if nothing else, I think we, as rhetoric majors, can appreciate that that is beautifully meta. Thank you. <laughs>